Hi everyone, once again welcome to this um, lecture. Um, again, the class is um, the programming uh, class. Um, um, today we will be continuing our discussion on um, tickle. Um, so um, last time we saw um, we actually like went through a set of commands um, basically the list commands the string commands um, global expressions um, uh, actually the regular expression then the globbing style um, um, operation essentially um, or globbing style matching and also we talked about the exact matching using the string commands these are all like they all fall under the string basically. Um, and then we also looked at the glob command which is actually different from this globbing style um, and then we also looked at uh, scan and the format commands for um, um, reading in uh, information and um, also like formatting uh, the outputs. Then we went into the control structures essentially like the while loop, if loop all those things we uh, looked at uh, for loops and things like that. Um, so the key thing about um, um, Tickle is again I want to re-emphasize this is the first lecture that we did. Uh, tickle has two parts. There is a interpreter interpreter and then there's a parser. So as you all know, Tickle is nothing but set of words separated by white space and uh, it is also like separated by the new line characters or every line, every line is um, detected as one command each line of uh, tickle script um, otherwise like I mean the command uh, delimiter is a semicolon. So anything that is either a semicolon or a new line character is treated as one command. And then that command is again further split into white spaces basically like so each word is split uh, by white space and then that particular command is sent to the parser. So interpreter itself does not play any part in understanding whether it is a command whether it is an argument things like that. Once it parses once it uh, passes all the words to the parser then it is the parser's job to understand okay the first um, word is interpreted as a command this is the command and then once the command is interpreted then it actually like now looks at uh, all these arguments so for each command it knows like how many arguments so once it understands that there is a command that is when the arguments are decided and that is when um, it actually like goes through um, in detail as to um, what exactly is um, um, uh, each command can do and how many arguments does it take whether you filled out all the arguments or not and things like that. So um, this concept is very important uh, because uh, this is how like I mean we will be writing our programs and uh, examining them so this will help you in debugging uh, the, uh, the programs. Um, again um, so um, <clears throat> the you can avoid like a lot of common mistakes um, if you understand this structure and this is how things will be done once you understand this then you can avoid a lot of issues um, okay so uh, just looking at simple uh, programming um, actually like there will be like more examples that will be in your lab from So um, this is a, a quick program to generate a random number. Uh, can anyone tell um, what exactly it does? Um, uh, there are like different things basically. One, I mean, I want to draw some attention to the first uh, lecture and the second lecture actually, um, especially the second lecture where we talked about two major things. One is um, the command substitution. And then the variable substitution. 
So this is command substitution, variable substitution. So in this one, in, the, in this particular command, at least like there is that one thing is happening, which is a command substitution. If you look at the square brackets here, so anything within that one, that uh, square bracket is um, um, interpreted as a command. So here we have this command. So the Perl, I mean, sorry, the tickle um, interpreter when it um, goes through this, it separates it out basically in a set random number and then it substitutes this command and then basically like I mean also once it this is again recursively called so and it goes to the the parser now the expr has been parsed and it knows that it's a command and that needs certain arguments so here we have an int rand and then um, with nothing and then times 10 so now here we don't need that um, um, so it knows that actually like this argument is in rand um, um, with uh, just um, um, parenthesis so this rand is further called as a function and that um, rand is actually uh, defined as rand will um, get a um, uh, value a random number between 0 and 1. So that's what this returns, and surely enough, uh, zero and between zero and one, it's actually it's like um, um, uh, some. Um, you know, it's not an integer; it's just a um, um, value. Basically, it's a um, floating point number. Now, this that gets multiplied by ten, so that gives you a number between zero and 10 now and this number can be a floating number and then now the integer is applied on top of it and which converts this number into a regular integer between 0 and 10 and then that is how this expression is evaluated and that is assigned to this random number. So the random number actually uh, equals. Random number is any number between zero and ten, and it's an integer. So I, I hope, like I mean, this this is simple example, but it has enough complexity in it to explain uh, how this works. So now that we are seeing this um, um, this example. Um, this actually sets uh, the the topic for today, which is essentially the tickle procedures. So we will cover um, a number of things in the tickle procedure today, and this is probably the most important thing to learn and understand in tickle. So let's uh, look at uh, the procedure. So before I go that. In tickle, pretty much like all the programming is developed as procedures, and then basically, like the top level program will just call these procedures uh, for um, uh, to get the values essentially. So, if you look at the Perl, look at Perl programming language, we had functions that pretty much did a lot of these things, but um, here it is the procedures. So, how do we define a procedure? That is the first thing. So first we put this keyword called proc and then the next word is the name of the procedure and then we have list of argument names then the body. So a proc command how many arguments does it take if you look at here we have sub 1 this is argument number 1 this is argument number 2 and here we have one at least two different words but if you look at this the curly braces this makes it into a single word as we know and that this is the third argument. So a proc command will take three arguments the first being the name of the proc 
the second being the list of arguments and then the third is the body of the prop. So I want you to remember these things basically so that um, you can um, um, easily identify a, a tickle script and easily identify parts of the tickle script and uh, also you can understand what exactly the script is trying to do. And uh, procedures behave just like built in commands. Uh, so here basically here we have a, uh, the same thing basically with an argument of 3 and then that gives uh, 2 basically sub 1 3 gives the value as 2. And then the arguments can also have default values um, so um, for example but again they are all like in just one word. So we will be putting a lot of these curly braces for example here the proc dcr this has again like I mean after proc it will be 1, 2 and 3 but uh, if you look at the second one we have not just one variable we have one, one variable here and one variable here, two arguments to it and then the first argument does not have any default value the second argument has a default value of 1. And then the expression is basically like dollar x minus dollar y, which is this x minus this y. That um, what is um, will be passed back to the program that calls this procedure. So um, so fairly simple we will introduce some more additional concepts uh, later on which is the proc arguments and uh, or proc attributes and things like that um, we do not want to um, impose on you with all those other details uh, the complex details um, simply put you have a procedure with um, essentially uh, all you got to remember is the proc statement or proc command has three arguments the first argument being the name second argument the, the arguments and then the third one is the, the body of the, uh, the procedure. So now let us look at a procedure um, so here we have a top level which sets uh, i as 0 and then we call the procedure f where we set i to 2 again once we do this it is not ok. Why is that not okay? Because we have defined already i here, but if you use it inside the procedure, what happens? The second one is now like if it's one, then set j is zero, and then increment j. Increment j, even though like we are setting j as zero, this is okay. Why is this okay? So in uh, procedures and in, in tickle in general there is a concept of uh, uh, scoping which is what we will talk about um, uh, in great detail today. Uh, the scoping is essentially to understand what is the life of a variable for example here the life of the variable is only up to here. So when you go here it is cannot be this is a different procedure procedure starts and then uh, this is uh, uh, a variable that is already here so tickle will be erroring out whereas uh, here the j scope is all the way to the end of the procedure it starts here and goes all the way to the end of the procedure so if you increment j this is ok this is ok this is not ok that is because I does not have the scope into the procedure and we are using it something which is uh, not defined. So now the first question is how do we get I into this program can we do something so that the program recognizes and um, recognizes I and actually uh, moves forward one quick way to do it is put it in the argument right which is which is what um, like I mean in, in you can do essentially and then uh, once it is in the argument then you can it is a fair game as to like what you are going to do with it 
and then you can return it. But oftentimes we won't be able to do it, and so um, SQL actually provides some rich command set. Um, so again, the main thing is there are local and global variables, and the interpreter knows variables by their name and the scope. Each procedure introduces a new scope. So the scope is what was uh, making the one that is not, um, uh, not able to read. So here is another example which is a very similar to the previous one that we saw. We set X to 10 and then we say like the procedure is uh, set X expression dollar uh, $X minus dollar D. Here it is even more severe now we are using this X setting the X outside the procedure and using it inside. This is also not allowed. So, if you try to run the program with delta x equal to delta x one, it will just come up with an error message saying that cannot be x, no such variable. So, how do we correct this issue? So, Tickle actually supports another syntax called the global. Once we specify the global, then automatically the scope is transferred into that procedure as well. So if you say proc delta x d and then immediately say global x and then you do the set x expression dollar x minus dollar d it understands and then now it comes up with the correct answer which is 1 which is delta x 1 equal to 9 because this, this particular one is actually just subtracting the number from number 10. Okay, um, and the global itself is an ordinary command essentially. You mean it's again it is governed by its own command names. So global is a command actually. It's not a syntax specified in the language. So again, I want to make the distinction again and again. Um, so um, again, the global uh, here. Um, If you say now VAR name and then that is what you are declaring here as global then we set the variable name the dollar variable name to passing by reference essentially. So this is a tricky one there you can see that actually um, it is an ordinary command where you are actually passing the same thing basically into that command. And then um, you are actually um, also like setting that variable name um, like to the, the dollar I mean dollar variable name as uh, passing by reference. So um, to do like some of these things there you can actually pass now the, the variable or pass the scope which is defined inside the procedure to outside the procedure. So the global is pretty much it takes the scope from outside into inside proc now how do we communicate inside proc to outside oftentimes we may want to implement uh, based on a procedure some global name or even like a local name which we need to pass it to another another one. So for this actually we have two commands which are up var and uh, up level. Um, so the level um, naming is another one basically so the top level is named as uh, 0 and then the 0 is actually also global and then 1 is just 1 called deep 2 is 2 called deep etc etc. So what that means is if uh, you have a top level and then you have a proc A um, actually use the proper notation of A with the whatever the arguments and then inside the body you have proc B and then inside proc B you have proc C and then you close it. So 
this kind of scenario actually um, from the top level so in dentals proc A that is level 1 proc B is level 2 and proc C is level 2 ok. So, um, here there is one more example which is 0 is current 1 is scholar 2 is scholar scholar etc etc. So here is one simple uh, thing basically in the procedure where we have increment var name uh, we say up var 1 var name var and then set var equals uh, var plus 1. So there is a tie up now between var name and var from outside and all you got to do is if you increment it automatically gets updated. So what does up level do up level does for the code what up, up, up or does for the variables. So in up or essentially we are sending like the, the variable name to other procedures uh, whether it is higher or lower in the hierarchy um, whereas uh, in the up level you are actually now um, transferring code to the um the, the other levels essentially so how do we do it essentially here is the one uh, quick example the procedure called loop from to script um again how many arguments are there for the proc it's one two three and four i mean actually not only one it's one two and three so that's always the same now if you look at from to script that is another um, command so um, essentially like I mean um, there it is basically um, we take the i uh, from dollar from and then that i to 2 we will we'll do like up level the script and then increment i. So here again like I mean the script is um, sent to the next uh, level. So here uh, and as an example set s is uh, empty and then loop 15 set s is um, dollar s star and then puts uh, dollar s it puts this uh, actually this is loop 1 to 15 to 5 so 5 stars it, it uh, generates. Now how do we capture um, variable length argument lists um, often times it is not a fixed length so you need to capture the variable length so here there is a quick example uh, the name is sum there are arguments and then basically the body is shown all the way here and then inside we say like set x is equal to 0 and then for each i args increment s uh, by 1 and then return yes. So, first argument is 1, so it increments only once, then the second argument is 2, then it increments twice, and then it basically computes the sum of all the integers um, that you specify from as from and to. So some 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 becomes 15, some just sum is just uh, 0. So again um, this args is another keyword that we will use to capture a variable length argument list. So whenever we say args that means that the interpreter already assumes that okay, there will be like not 1 but more than 1 which will come. Okay. Now let us look at uh, some of the error handling, um, so um, errors do occur uh, and they normally about um, the commands in progress and then the application will uh, display an error message. Um, so here uh, a quick example basically uh, 
there is no like dollar i or dollar i here. So we set this expression and then basically the expression has an error. So here it is easy to spot this error and then correct it. Uh, sometimes you have to look into the particular error and um, look for more information. So one way to get more information is this set error info, um, which provides more information regarding what went wrong. So here you can see basically like there's a syntax error in this expression that we wanted to be actually put together for testing, um, and then. Um, and it, it also says basically like I mean uh, it is a syntax error in this expression while executing the XP of this and it is invoked within which uh, command it is uh, getting invoked from and look at how the command is represented here it is actually the complete command um, where this one here and then it, it also indicates the for each uh, body line essentially like from where that this one is called. So there are some advanced uh, error handling features. Um, so there is a global variable already declared uh, for you. It's called error code that holds the machine readable information about errors. But it can interpret errors, and then it can do some exception handling. So, for example, uh, here there's a simple one which is catch expr to plus message. Um, so the catch returns zero for OK and then one for error. And then you can say like set message uh, for getting the message, and then that now gives you the syntax error in expression two plus. And then the other one is like I mean using these commands you can generate errors by yourself for example you can say like error what is the error and then um, you can have like a return as a code error and with bad argument. Now let us look at some of the IO files so um, we will have like few more items on um, the procedures which I will plan to do it uh, next time. So um, file IO commands essentially there are many of them one is open get seek flush glob use read tell cd read, f configure f blog file event puts source eof pwd and uh, clock name so all these are file IO commands um, actually the file name um, so the file commands use tokens to refer to files. So here uh, we are opening my file dot text that gives back this token file 4 and so that I mean you can use that as a, you know in further uh, usage. So here like we can say like dollar f write the, uh, the text into file so this gets printed out into the my file dot text. And then finally, once you are done, we just close the uh, the file handle uh, or the token, which is uh, just close the dollar. Bar. Now the other commands um, gets and puts. Basically, they are line oriented. Um, so when we say like gets dollar f, it reads one line of dollar f into x. The read command can read specific number of bytes. So we can say like I mean read only the hundred bytes from the file dollar f. Then seek, tell, and read can do random access of I/O. So they can go into a particular sector and then read from there, uh, things like that. So here we just say like set f is uh, open database um, r in read only mode, and then we do a seek basically of the hundred and thousand twenty fourth uh, element, and then we can read from the uh, the hundred. Uh, I mean actually, um, this should be one one two three. So 
so we can read all the way up to that much actually sorry this is actually 100 because this is in um, the number of bytes so read dollar f100 reads 100 bytes starting at 1024 so that becomes 1123 final ending of uh, there the file will be so that's what uh, is shown here So there is a, there are some nifty commands within uh, Tickle that can help you with further processing of files. Here, for example, we open a file called log with read-only access, um, and then we can actually do file event as a command, basically, and then we can say like if dollar f is readable, then we can um, do certain things, basically. Um, so. Um, the file event is such a command which is useful uh, to you can watch the file without actually getting involved. But layers, there are some issues. I don't know whether this is already addressed or not. Uh, you can try it out and then see whether these, these uh, issues are addressed in more machines. Then uh, there are uh, two other commands: the f block, uh, f block, and uh, uh, f configure. That gives you the full um, control over these uh, files. So f f uh, f configure minus buffering. Uh, it's basically like you can say line or full, and then f configure minus blocking. You can make it true or false. F configure minus translation is another command, and then F block typically um, returns the boolean. Hey Sandeep. Hey Sandeep. <laughs> 